Asian cities have many interesting varieties of public transport, including jitney buses, shared taxis, motorcycle taxis, water transport, etc. Such diversity can be a good thing to give people many choices besides the car. These services which are run by small operators often respond well to public needs. But they can be very unpopular with the authorities because they are difficult to regulate. However, simply banning these vehicles just reduces public transport supply. It is much better to gradually encourage the small operators to integrate with other public transport. They can provide very effective feeder services and can often serve very well on routes that are not suited to mass rapid transit or conventional buses. But rules on safety do need to be strictly enforced. Non-motorized vehicles such as bicycles and pedicabs are also a part of creating better urban transport. Cycling may not be everybody's cup of tea. But cycling and pedicabs are well suited to short trips and can play a valuable role in the transport system. In fact, most trips within cities are shorter than 6 kilometers. It is also very cost effective to make cycling easier and safer. This includes providing secure parking, public transport links, maps, traffic calming, lanes, bikeways, signs, etc. One might think that cycling is only for the fit and able. But the truth is, pedal vehicles can also increase the mobility of the frail, elderly or physically disabled people. Some governments and authorities say that pedicabs should be banned. But these non-motorized taxis have a legitimate role to play in serving short trips, especially to and from markets and public transport. You might think that motor vehicles are the modern way to move goods. But for short distances, non-motorized vehicles are often the most efficient way to move goods in busy urban areas. But the street environment needs to be made friendly to non-motorized vehicles. Motorcycles are a very common mode of transport in Asia. There are pros and cons to motorcycles. On the one hand, they are convenient for getting around quickly and take up much less space than cars. But on the other hand, motorcycles are very risky and most current models tend to be noisy and very, very polluting. Motorcycles are also fierce competition for public transport which is vital for the future of cities. So motorcycles present difficult dilemmas. Finally, transport planning needs to make a special effort to ensure that transport is fair to all groups in society. Transport policies must not add to the burden of unfairness that is already suffered by low-income people, women, children, people with disabilities, and frail or aged people. Street designs and transport systems can disable many people when they are built with no thought for wheelchair users or people with visual impairments. If facilities are planned to be accessible for people with disabilities right from the start, it is much cheaper than having to fix them later. We have tried to show you just a few of the exciting steps that can be taken to improve transport in our cities and towns. No single one of these ideas is the magical solution to all our transport problems. But put them all together in an integrated package and we do have a recipe for better urban transport. Look for solutions that benefit everyone. If you need more information, try starting with this book, Taking Steps, a community action guide to people-centered, equitable and sustainable urban transport. Or visit this website to get in touch with other groups working on bringing about change. As you can see, there is a lot that can be done to bring about better urban transport. Every effort counts, and we can turn ripples into waves. <laughs>